this video I want to uh, give some practical examples of how to deal with uh, disruptive energy. So there's a lot of different options which you could uh, use to, um, to get rid of something. And I just want to go buy them one by one. And depending on what exactly it is and what your own personal preference is, you may yeah, use one strategy more than another. So one which is very popular is in a way to try to burn up the energy which is disrupting. So if you have like a, a, a negative energy, like I'm putting here on my hand, what you would do is with the other hand create a light source. You usually want to imagine a very bright white light like the sun which will just burn away whatever is there and just like a piece of wood burns up uh, over time in the fire this intense white light will burn away whatever this structure is until it is completely gone so working with white light has the advantage in a way that it tends to clean things the one of the problems is also this kind of uh, intense abrasive energy for your own energy body so it tends also to harm the user a little bit so my own energy body will have to recover my own uh, energy channels and chakras will have to recover from having used this white light but it's one way to do things another way is um, especially if there is something which is kind of like stuck halfway like a spirit which is unable to to go on or to let go and it's kind of trapped and thereby serving somebody else is to offer a transformative energy so you're in a way allowing the thing to grow into uh, yeah a next phase a next role and thereby leave uh, its current position so if we have for instance a little trapped spirit here i'll put one on my left hand so for those who can see energies um, this spirit has some yeah um, while it is not a dark energy in itself it has some dark energy in itself which is blocking it from moving on from growing on so this is a spirit which is just stuck um, and by giving it this transformative energy which i like to imagine a golden light some people prefer to imagine a pink or a violet flame also possible but i like gold but it's all about the intention of being soft and gentle and nurturing so the spirit is now absorbing the energy i'm offering with this hand and then slowly but surely it starts to integrate the energies which were blocking him and it is starting to grow in strength and now it starts its own transformation So for those of you who can see, you will see that in a way the, the, the shape, which is a reflection of the self-image of the spirit, is changing. So instead of seeing itself as something yeah, more or less compact and earthbound, and also now seeing itself as something from a higher dimension. Let's go of the energies which cannot be transformed. And leave. So this is very effective if you're dealing with captured spirits or dead spirits, like you know, slave soldiers being used against you or against your client. So, and then we have a little bit of this yeah, heavy energies um, what 
It's also a practical one, it's in a way return to sender. Because these energies, they ultimately have an origin, so like somebody or something did this to the spirit, afflicted it with this energy, which is not its own. And this happens also a lot in normal healings where people pick up energies from their partner, from their family, from their colleagues at work or the, the place of work, which can ultimately yeah, penetrate and block the, the own energy circulation. And energies always are in a way like a magnet connected to, the, to their source. And um, people tend to throw away the things they don't want. Like, I don't want my sadness or my anger or my frustration, so I'll stuff them, push them out of my aura. But out of your aura, that's from somebody else's space. Or And yeah, you push them into other people. So people are in a way passing negative energies around because nobody's transforming them. But yeah, you don't always feel like transforming them. Sometimes you just want to send it back. And what you want to do then is actually to make this energy a little bit stronger so it will tend to go back because now this is a very heavy uh, energy for the people who can feel it or see it. So and it is just absorbing, dragging my own energy down as it also did with the spirit. But ultimately this energy has a source. But to be able to get to that source, it needs to be slightly higher because the lower the energy is, the more it gets bound to a specific time and place. And that's why it cannot move. So you take this energy and you increase its vibration. So you translate it into a higher form of itself. So this shard of energy becomes lighter and lighter and lighter and it takes some effort from your own spirit so you use your own heart to create this transformation to feed this growth of this elevation and you can use your own connection if you're praying or connecting to a higher source by feeding this higher energy into it. And when you feel it's become light enough, it will try to pull away from your hand and you just let it go. And then it returns to sender, but yeah, also in a higher vibration. So they won't get the same heavy energy back, but they will get it back in a slightly higher, more translated form, which can actually also help them to translate similar energies and to transform them into higher forms. So besides sending it back to the sender which works really well if it's not a person um, not everything in a way comes from another person so some things you want to send to their own dimension or you want to give to the earth so giving to the earth is usually relatively simple you just yeah put your hands on the earth and connect to the earth so that yeah we are in a way part of the energy body of the earth but we're in a way denying that. We're saying like, oh, no, I'm in my own little bubble, my own little universe. I'm not part of the earth any longer. And because of that, yeah, our energetic uh, exchange with the earth becomes disrupted. But if you give up this sense of self and really say like, okay, I am part of the earth. I am, yeah my whole body, my also my energy body, it has just come out of the earth, it will return to the earth. I'm in a way the earth making itself manifest. And I let go of my boundaries, I let go of my sense of self that try to feel as a part of the earth, which is just doing what the earth wants me to do, so I left to let go of my own will. And then the circulation between me and the earth comes back. The energies which the earth doesn't feel should be with me and then also just flowing back to the earth i just can release them by not holding on to them saying okay let all these things go back to the earth and let the things which should be in me come out of the earth and be in me so you're in a way pressing a reset button allowing the earth to determine your nature again and to wipe away the previous version of yourself and you can also do this with the client if the client is good at meditating to help them to 
make this connection with the earth to renew themselves. So this works really really great if you're dealing with energies which are also from this earth. Sometimes you get an energy which is not from this earth, which is really an alien energy. Um, that happens. Or really an energy from a very other dimension also happens not as often. So I would say in 80% of the time sending things to the earth is really the way to go. But sometimes you can't. And in that case, I would advise you to um, try to find out if you can either find a place which has a natural opening to uh, yeah, multiple other dimensions or solar systems like Stonehenge or Woodhenge or Avebury, for instance. Um, you can also create portals to other dimensions. You can use your hand for that or you can use a ritual space for that. Um, but you can only do that in as far in a way as the solar spirits and the earth allow you to do that. So it's a relatively unique skill. Like if you're allowed to exchange, yeah, in a way, or be part of the exchange between this solar system and other solar systems. Um, yeah, then you can also co-determine what should and shouldn't be here. But this is an authority which ultimately comes from the solar angels and the earth spirits together. And if you have that permission of them, or otherwise you can pray to them. And like if you have a really weird alien energy like this, you can say like, okay, um, solar angels, earth spirits, uh, allow this, please allow this energy to go back to where it belongs and then it will be taken away. So that's also a way to go if you cannot do it yourself. Just ask the powers which are responsible for that type of thing to do it for you. Let's see if I forgot anything. Oh yeah, the last one. To in a way decompose something. So I'll grab a curse now and show you how that can be decomposed. Okay. So this is a curse. I'm just taking this out of one of my uh, clients' auras. So as you can see, like it's a it's a composite energy. So part of it is her energy. Part of it is an invading energy, which is more masculine. So on this side, you can see like this is the invading energy. This is more her energy, and it forms a complex which does something. Uh, unhealthy for her. So as I said a curse is kind of like a programming so um, and the programming has basically lines of code and each symbol each character in itself does nothing but the combination is an instruction and what you can do is pull it apart and then it will completely disintegrate. So what you need is to get to the right vibration. So this was created using uh, uh, symbol space. So I need to go into symbol space. So I need to elevate the energy of my hand to be on that level. And once it is on that level, I can take something move it out a bit to create an opening because ultimately what I want to take away is the driving force which is contained in here. And driving force is usually a kind of an idea or an emotion of the person who created the curse of harming or aggression or vengeance or whatever. Once this driving force is gone the rest becomes passive. So that is like pulling the fuse out of a bomb. So now I go into uh, emotional space because it's apparently an emotional trigger. And I remove this negative emotion, which is giving me a horrible headache by the way. Quite painful. 
and you will see that the curse itself, this energy, starts to disintegrate now naturally. Now that it has nothing to yeah, empower it, nothing to organize it anymore. This energy of my client that I can now send back to her by making it higher. So I put it into a higher vibration that will naturally flow back into our aura. And this negative emotion I can also send return to sender or do something else with it, but in this case I'll just do a return to sender. So um, this was a relatively um, simple curse. I'll also show you a curse which actually has um, a warning spirit attached to it. I'll get one actually from the same client. So here again we have a curse, but if you see here it is connected to a spirit. This is a watcher spirit. So these watcher spirits, they exist naturally, but they can also be created using magic. And basically what it does, it's just an alarm bell. So as soon as this curse would get disarmed, as I did with the other one, this watcher spirit would go and tell the person who uh, created this curse that the person has become uncursed so that they can curse them again, find me and beat me up. So a watcher like that, you can, you should either Fortunately, they're not very smart, so they usually have a triggering condition. So you can create them. Uh, in this case, I will create a false curse to connect it to, while I remove the real curse. So that's one of the things you can do. You can also try to capture it or destroy it or do something else with it. But in this case, I think it's nice to let the person continue to think that the person is cursed while this curse is actually taken away. So I will create a fake curse, which is a glamour. Um, a glamour is basically an illusion uh, made out of energy. So this is a curse. I tried to make it a little bit more similar to that one. And now I'm going to do something very tricky because, as I said, things, all energy structures need to be feeding on something um, because otherwise they will disintegrate and I'll actually make it feed on the Watcher Spirit so that yeah, the curse won't de decay while the Watcher Spirit is there, but the curse will actually slowly eat up the Watcher Spirit so that when it decays it cannot report on it. So now is the big trick of, in a way, connecting this in between. So I will connect this curse or glamour of a curse to the Watcher Spirit. Cut the real connection by, in a way, giving myself bright light like white light fingers. And this will then go back to my client, fake curse plus Watcher. And this curse, which is also giving me a horrible headache, unfortunately. I will now show how to transform. So, in this case I choose for a purple flame. As the structure starts to dissolve, so the energy by the purple flame gains a higher vibration and goes back to the original caster. One of the reasons why it is very important in a way to send the energy back is that I don't want there to be remain a link which is pulling my client to the perpetrator or the other way around the perpetrator to my client because if these uh, 
it works both ways. If I put a curse on somebody, I will be attacked attracted and connected to that person and the other way around. And this can be a very difficult thing, especially if you start talking about reincarnation, because then you will end up having a relationship or an affair or having that person as your child or husband or wife or whatever, <laughs> because you have such a connection which has not been detached. So cursing <sighs> can lead to horrendously complex family situations if they're not removed in life. Okay, so I hope this has shown you some techniques of um, how to undo some of the damage.